It is the Christmas cosy reading night. I have my glass of gin and tonic in a wine glass because we have no gin glasses. We have no tall glasses. We had no other glass in which to put the gin. And as it is the Christmas cosy reading night, I wore a Christmas jumper and I'll be reading a Christmas carol. And I've got a gingerbread candle. All to really go into the ambience of being cosy. Anyway, it's actually past seven o'clock and it's probably about quarter past. I haven't started reading yet. I'm planning on trying to read a lot of A Christmas Carol tonight, really trying to get into that festive mood that's probably meant to be what we're getting into because, you know, it's Christmas, it's the cosy reading night and hopefully all of this gin and gingerbread is really going to help inspire some of that festive spirit to appear. Anyway, after the first hour, I'm going to check in. There's every chance I might have a little read of A Snow Garden and other stories by Rachel Joyce, but I'm not sure yet. I also have some gingerbread tea downstairs, just in case. Um, I don't want to get too squiffy for all this night. I guess I'll see you in an hour. So the first hour of the cosy reading night is over and we have got through two staves of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I am reading the edition that is illustrated by Robert Ingpen and I'll leave a link to that down below because I enjoy his illustrations and the books that I have that he has illustrated I think are quite nicely done. Um, so yes, I'm hoping that I might actually be able to finish this book tonight which would be great um, because then that means I've read two books this month and I won't feel as lazy as I currently do. I am going to be extinguishing this gingerbread candle because it doesn't really smell that much like gingerbread and um, it's been going for an hour so what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch it for this gingerbread one. Now I got this from Next and it doesn't really smell like what it says on the tin, but it'll be worth a go for an hour. And that's how much gin we drank, so that much. Because um, we were really a bit engrossed in that book. <sighs> so yes, I might refill that glass. I will definitely be changing the candle. And I think that's about it for hour one. I am thoroughly enjoying myself, hidden away in my bedroom as it is. And yeah, it's quite relaxing. It's quite nice. Although it seems that I do read a lot quicker when there aren't other people around. Who the thunk it? And so the second hour of the Christmas cosy reading night, run by Lauren over at Lauren and the Books, I realised I forgot to say that in every clip so far, is now into its third hour, the third and final hour. And I have just read about the third and final spirit in A Christmas Carol, who some would say is the scariest spirit, I concur with that, however I like to think that most of the spirits in this story are a bit scary, for that is their purpose. They are there to scare Scrooge and help him reflect on the fact that he has been a terrible human being and that although he has wealth and he's rich and he finds and thinks himself a brilliant character, he is in fact a bit of an arsehole. Candle number two didn't really have much scent to it so I might move on to a different candle as well. I have a really nice Christmas one over there so I might like that and go into the last hour. So what I think I'm going to do is read the last 16 pages of this and then read as much as I can of A Snow Garden and other stories before we finish at 10. Tonight has been a great night for relaxing and being cosy and I really do enjoy these cosy reading nights and I'm glad that I discovered them and began to take part in them because they're extremely enjoyable nights and knowing that tons of people all over the place are doing them is quite nice as well. Anyway, I'll see you in about an hour. And that is the Christmas cosy reading night over 
and done with. After the last clip, I read the final chapter, final stave of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, and I do think that I want to discuss this more in my wrap up because this really goes with what I was saying about rereading books and how each time you reread a book you pick up on new things and I did mention a few of them on Twitter but I think when we actually get to my December wrap up I'm going to be discussing this book more and discussing why I still think for me it's closer to the top of the books I like by Charles Dickens and yes a lot of that is to do with nostalgia. And then for the last 45 minutes I read A Snow Garden and Other Stories by Rachel Joyce. This is the same writer who wrote The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry which I finished listening to during my first cosy reading night way back in August. And I found this book and I knew that I wanted to read it at Christmas and way back when Lauren first announced the Christmas cosy reading night I knew that I wanted to read part of this and I wished that I'd actually spent the entire night reading this book. It was that good. I, um, I'm 62 pages in. The first story was marvellous and the uh, this is the first time I've actually read Rachel Joyce's prose, the last two books of hers I've listened to on audiobook and the more I read this the more aware I become that Rachel Joyce's words are definitely meant to be heard because she has such a brilliant way with sentences and there is something in the structure of them that makes them quite comedic. So now we're on the afternoon after the cosy reading night. The stories so far have been a bit amazing really in that, especially with the second story, in that there is hints towards something and okay so you have this very overt crumbling of a house that is somewhat similar and being used as an allegory for the crumbling of this couple's marriage um, but there's something subliminal underneath related to the sun that you don't get until right at the end and I hadn't even noticed before and then something that said earlier and other things that were dotted within made perfect sense in relation to the story and I'm really looking forward to seeing the other characters that Joyce has used within here and see how she manages a larger cast of different characters because so far we've only seen, I have only read Harold Fry and Queenie Hennessy and within those they are very much focused on the protagonists in that one is focused on Harold Fry, one is focused on Queenie Hennessy, both are their own voices and this is definitely somewhat different to that and I'm really glad to be reading this at Christmas time. Once again I would like to thank Lauren from Lauren and the Books for beginning the Cozy Reading Night and for allowing pe other people to become involved and to take the time out of their lives, out of their schedules just to dedicate some time to just reading and relaxing and just saying to them, it's three hours out of your day. Because it's really not that much when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. But so often we will not allow ourselves those three hours just to do something that we really enjoy. And I have been extraordinarily grateful this time for those three hours. And for the cosy reading night for falling when it did. I look forward to finding out what other cosy reading nights there will be because I'm sure there are going to be many books I can find to fit themes and I quite liked the idea of um, a Christmas cosy reading night. I know other people read um, more general fiction, more um, new releases but I'm quite glad that I stuck to these two Christmas books and I am looking forward to the few more Christmas books that I have to read before the end of the year. Anyway. Did you participate in Cozy Reading Night? If so, if you recorded a video, link it to me down below. If you wrote something about it, if you explored it in any shape or form online, please link me towards it and let me know what you read because I really enjoyed going on Twitter during and afterwards to see what how people have gone. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, that is all.